Howdy y'all! Today we're going to take a look at a pickup and delivery game called Star Wars Outer Rim. This is a 1-4 to four player game that takes about 2-3 to three hours to play for ages 14 up. Howdy y'all! Thank you for joining us for this box opening of Star Wars Outer Rim. Sorry the plastic's already been ripped off, but there was a problem that happened halfway through as I was already opening, doing the opening on this. And... I wasn't sure when the issue happened, so decided to just go ahead and start from scratch. So you're going to see some stuff already out of the baggies or ripped open in here. But figure we start this fresh. All right. So been looking forward to the opening this one for a while. It's Star Wars Outer Rim. Um, it's basically supposed to be a re-implementation of a game of mine called Fire, or a game that I like a lot called Firefly the Game. This is supposed to be just basically the Star Wars version. And, of course, with some differences, I'm sure. It says it's a game of bounty hunters, mercenaries, and smugglers for one to four players. And it's from Fantasy Flight, whereas Firefly, the game, is from Gale Force 9. Um, let's see what it looks like and see some of the differences. Yeah, you got to hear stuff moving around in there as I just threw it all back in to get ready to get started again. Um... And I'll, I'll, I'll go through it whenever I hit something that I definitely already opened up so that y'all know exactly how it came in already. All right. So in Firefly, the game, of course, it's a big old board. We're going to, I'm going to try not to keep talking about and doing comparisons to Firefly, but from everything I've seen, this is definitely a, a good re-implementation. I'm hoping to try it out and see what's up. So, but yep, Star Wars Out of Rim, and you can see it's got a board that, Kind of uh, looks like a half circle and some cards and then your player area and stuff and whatnot. So we're going to open it up, see if the differences are. Before I open it up, I'm going to show you the mat. You can get this separate. Bear with me as I kind of try to get this to zoom out a little bit. But you can get this map separate. It is a play mat with some nice thickness to it. Just like typical uh, game mat. Fantasy Flight has been making game mats for a lot of their games lately. Um, they're usually only really easy to get a hold of. It, if you pre-order them, knowing the game's about to come out, and you know you want to get the game and get the play mat. After that, it looks like you can still get some of them, but a lot of them do sell out pretty fast. Um, but this one's a pretty nice one. I'm not able to get the zoom out completely, but this is where it looks like that circular board uh, part circular board will go and then it's got a spot for the cards it says nice and it's got like a nice artwork right there for the cards and whatnot but nice little good looking play mat all right so let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of this and like i said i do apologize that i had that error to where y'all can't see the fresh opening without the pla the plastic already but like i said mistakes happen all right, so here we go. Pretty much all this is exactly how it came. They had this sitting right on top, which is just another one of the guides showing you other games of theirs. Fantasy Flight's always got a great selection of games. And I think just flipping through this quickly, I've pretty much played most of those. And we'll get to them all down the line. Uh, this is the only difference. It did have the rule book on top. And basically, this is a nice thing that um, Fantasy Flight has been doing, I've noticed. It used to be it was just one rule book. Uh, I'm not sure when I noticed the challenge or noticed the change. I think it was around Eldritch Horror, so it's been a while. But I did notice they started doing, for their games that have a lot of rules and a lot of things, they have a rule book, which is a quick learn how to play. And then they have a rules reference book. So the rule book has the typical layout, it looks like. It's got the Game overview, using this book about how to play, give you some key concepts. The components, so that if it's something that refers to a component, you can go over here and figure out, oh, what did it mean? AI cards, oh, they look like this, or the market cards, they look like that. So, pretty nice setup. Fantasy Fly usually has a pretty decent setup because it doesn't leave you in the loop, uh, lurch about what you should and shouldn't set up. It, Pretty much, especially with the components, this is pretty decent. We'll go through it and see if it follows suit. 
Then it goes straight into playing the game and winning the game. And playing the game lets you know the phases, their steps. In this case, are phases, but in this case, it's steps. And then what you do to win the game. And then right into oh, planning step, action step, encounter step. And then additional rules that you may or may not need that they probably usually reference in here. And then extended game option, modular map options, which are options are always cool in a game. And then the single player game. So pretty cool. And then a quick reference sheet on the back. I have found sometimes with when I'm first playing a game, I'll sit there and have this off to the side just for a quick reference as I'm first learning the game. That way if I need it. And then like I said, a nice addition they do to some of their games is the rules reference, which is always nice. It's Usually on the back, it's got an index so that you can try to find what you need to find quickly. And this is just a better explanation if there's something you just won't, don't want to have to go through the book and find where it's got it listed at. You can go, hmm, I don't know. Let's say I want to encounter someone in combat. Hey, encounter cards, encounter step, or factions, or fame, you know, so. And it's alphabetical order, so that's nice. All right. Did not open these yet. We'll get to them. Pop outs for cardboard. These were in a nice bag, um, which I seem to have misplaced now. But yeah, these were in a nice bag. The Ziploc bag. Oh, yeah. It was like a big one. So they were in a nice Ziploc bag. And we kind of... Looks like these are the ships. So it looks like there were four starter ships. There's the... And it looks like that basically the difference in the starter ship is the stats. And you could take this one or you could take this one, the G9 Rigger or the G1A Starfighter. So, and it said starter ship on these. So I'm assuming these are the starting ships and you'll choose one of them just whether you, and once you know what these stats mean, that'll make your selection different. And then with that, it looked like we have other ships here and I was trying to tell it looks like the ships are double-sided and they are the same ship it looks like one has the general model and then one is like a ship you may have heard of if you are a Star Wars fan so it looks like you get to basically upgrade this ship in the future and that's just my guess there but like this says this says the fire spray 31 patrol craft and then of course the other side is the Slave 1. It looks like the stats are the same, but it, I noticed there's a special ability on the back. So I'm assuming this is something you could do. Well, let's see. Fight a ship combat against a player in your space who has more fame than you. If you win, gain one fame and flip the sheets. ship. So yes. So it looks like each ship has a goal. And then once you finish off the goal... You get to flip it over and now you have the named ship. So in this case, the Fire Spray 31 becomes the Slave 1. Um, so the modified YT 1300, which you can easily recognize that everybody knows is the Millennium Falcon. So pretty cool. The YV666, and this should be the Houndstooth. Yeah, some of my nerd technology are nerd coming out here, I guess. Aggressor class assault fighter and the IG 2000. The heavy duty lifter, the Archangel. The Lancer class pursuit craft and the Shadow Caster. The Hawk 290 freighter or HWK to the Moldy crew. And then Oh, I right, got that one. Yeah, the GX-1 short hauler to the Valorous. So, a few extra ships. And if I know anything about Fantasy Flight, we'll probably see an expansion that will add more ships, more bounty hunters. Most of these we know from certain bounty hunters. All right. So, the cards I didn't get to. So, we'll, go, we'll open those up and we'll go through some of the cards. Um, these were in a baggie. And... Kind of went through them, showed they got dice with different 
uh, gold with black and with different symbols and some blanks. I'm sure these are going to have something to do with the combat and skill checks and stuff. Fantasy Flight Games love their skill checks. Then in the same bag were these little clear holders. I'm sure it'll be for cardboard um, for your character so you can see them moving around on the map. Uh, this is typical in some of the Fantasy Flight character holder game or games that use characters. These are the holders usually for the characters. And of course, I'm going to try to see if I can't use their Legion line or even look into something where maybe 3D print up, maybe uh, like I'm sure Han Solo, Boba Fett, so forth and so forth. Or maybe even look into getting them from the Imperial Assault line. It had four of these in here, which we assumed was going to be for pegs to go into some cardboard. Um, and then that's when I ran into, realized I saw the issue because I was talking about the insert that they typically have here. And I was showing how typically it's, typically Fantasy Flight inserts are pretty cool in the fact that they usually have a spot where you can put the cards. And then everything else kind of fits in. But I found that typically in the once you get an expansion or so from the base games, these inserts usually aren't that good. And plus they're just cardboard. But for the most part, they work for just your base game. And then as I was talking about it, I noticed there was a bag underneath here. Or not really a bag. These were plasticed up together. And we started looking at them, and that's where we noticed that, yes, we did find where these pegs go. And it looks like they go in here, I'm assuming. But looks like they got a counter. Of course, I'm not sure 100% what that's for. We were making, we, there's just some assumptions by looking at this, but this looks like your player board. It's got a space for some gear here. It's got a spot here in the Firefly. There was a thing where you would be good or bad with somebody just depending on how you did usually you just kept a card to say you were good um this looks like it's got some type of shifter because it's shown green and red which i'm assuming is good bad and i guess middle could be neutral so i'm assuming there's some type of counter or something that'll go in here i didn't see anything plastic wise so it's probably a piece from the cardboard section but yeah and they got job or, or bounty and i noticed that these ships have this weird little thing here, but also notice it's on the other side too. So I don't know if that means you could have two ships. That's kind of cool. But yeah, they, so they had these different ones. They got this one that looks kind of like R2D2 ish. They got this goldish blue. They got like a reddish orange and then like a blackish red. So some differences in there. All right, let's go ahead and hit up this cardboard. Take a look at what's in it, and then we'll get to the cards. All right. Sorry, I had to use a knife to open that up. All right. All right, let's look at each of these cardboards. So we got, looks like map sections here with some planets on it. I see Orb Mentel here, and... Tonica, the ring of yeah so they always have these proof of purchases i always keep them i think it's kind of nice i don't not 100 percent sure why they got it i guess if you need to prove that you bought the game and you don't have a receipt you could always send that i guess to prove it uh these do not look like they're double-sided as far as like to where you can have them as something different but it looks like these go together basically to make up the map which yeah. All right. And then we got some cardboard sections here. I did already see they got these. This is basically the money system, the credits. These punch pretty good. I'm going to see if I can't print up some type of plastic credits or I'm sure if, they, if anything I've learned from Fantasy Flight, they'll probably have some plastic bits you can buy uh, down the line if the game is a success or not. And then they got these things, which I'm not sure what they are, but they do punch out and there seems to be a ton of them. Some different sized ones. I don't know if that's intentional or not. Guess we will see down the line. All right, what do we got over here? Some more map sections. We got Kessel, Mon Calamari. 
And then we got more money, but then I noticed we got some characters here. Rito, Bib Fortuna, Leia. So I'm assuming since it's Leia and I know she's not really a bounty hunter, smuggler or anything. Just looking at some of these names. Oh, yeah, because I'm even seeing like Chewbacca and stuff like that. Well, maybe. Hmm, I don't know. Down the line, we'll see. They do have different colors on them. Hmm. Lobot. Hmm. Uh, I mean, there's the bounty hunter element. Maybe that's what it is. Those are the bounties you can go get. Some more map fragments. Wonder if these are all played with all the time or if that changes each game. Some bigger credits. So the thousands, you got the five thousands and some more little cardboard punch outs. And then here's the characters. Looks like IG-88, Boba Fett. I'm not a fan of Boba Fett. I think he's kind of lame. Uh, Han Solo. Yeah, my boy, Lando Calrissian. Uh, some of these I don't recognize, which is, I mean, maybe it's just different artworks that i have used to or seen. Um, all right. We got some ships here and it looks like, so I'm assuming these are random ships that you can take out or there might, might be, um, things that can be sent after you. Cause I noticed they show that they're worth money and then I so, well, huh, this one isn't, of course, I guess Star Destroyers is one of those things you don't want to run into. And these are probably the ends of the map. And... Oh, and yeah, these show the colors. I didn't really see a green, but I guess these are the color of the things because it notes there's four of them and then there's four sections there. So this is probably for those. Oh, these are probably the factions. So you could be Rebellion. I don't know. Oh, okay, yeah. Because you could be in good or bad with the Rebellion. That's Imperial. I'm assuming this is Syndicate because I recognize that is Hut. Get y'all better look at that. Syndicate, I'm thinking, is what that is, if I remember right. And then this is the Hut. All right. So that looks pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the cards and see the artwork and what it looks like. I mean, it looks like a ton of cards. And looking at these cards... It does look like they are of a certain size. Let me get that box that I have. Yep, sorry. Should have looked at the back of the box, but yep. Um, I, I noticed on the back of the box it did say green. So like one of the things Fantasy Flight is really good about is, and one of the things I really liked, and they've always done it for years is they'll have a thing on the back of the box that'll tell you how many packs of sleeves you need and then it's going to have a color on there now if you are new to this you have to realize that there are some boxes that there are some sleeves you can get in this color or as far as like the color scheme of the box like this one is a green one so you would know you just need five of these boxes but there's only 50 sleeves in here and with this same brand, which is a Dragon Shield Arcane Tenman brand, they have a hundred card pack. So if you're using this, you would have only need three of the hundred card packs because you need 250 is what they're saying. Or not exactly 250, you're probably going to have some extras, but they're at least letting you know you're going to need. So if you see that number, you just want to basically multiply that by 50. And that's really how many sleeves you're going to need. So these are the ones I sleeve up in when I see that. These, so these are medium sized. Nice thing is if you aren't sure or you didn't notice that, you just want to make sure. It's got a, uh, Arcane Tinman puts a little thing on there to where you can kind of pair it up and know, okay, yes, that is the sleeve I need. And I do like these, these sleeves. And the main thing I like about the board game sleeves for uh, Arcane Tinman like I said, the mediums are 57 by 89, just in case you're going with another brand and you need to know the exact size of the sleeve. But one thing I like about the Arcane Tinman ones that you can get at your local game shop is it does come with the 50. But the nice thing is when you sleeve up the cards in these 50 sleeves, you're going to be able to put them right back in here. And you're going to it's going to be a pretty tight fit for all 50, but you can fit 
50 of your sleeve cards right back in here and it gives you a nice little tuck box that you can put inside your box to help protect your cards. So definitely check these out. That's what I prefer. And then I like I said, I like the non-glares. You can get the regular glares or the regular sleeves that aren't non-glare, but they don't come in a box. They come in a package and they do come in a package of 100 instead of a package of 50 in the case of this. Uh, so, all right. So, all right, let's get on with the cards. Uh, we'll try to separate them by the backs here, which I already showed on the map that they have different. It was, it was six. They got six different back cards. Well, I don't see this back, but this looks like it's like a number. So I'm assuming this has something to do. We'll figure it out as we learn the game. But they got numbers. And this looks like some type of Imperial Presence, Local Security, Black, yeah, Chewbacca. Hmm. This will give you kind of a look at them. There's Maz Kanata. Cut, cutthroat Game of Sabak. Lost Faith. Relic of the Past. So, interesting Wondering if these numbers really have a correlation. 92, 92, 3, 2, 3. I'm assuming this back is showing that there's different. It's saying there's four different number ones. Because um, I noticed there's three 92s here along with that. So, yep, we'll look into that. But this looks like it may be. Uh, this looks like in the same setup or the same vein of one of their other games called Arkham Horror, where it looks like it might be some type of story thing and based off a of skill or what you make on the skill check. So that looks like it'd be something pretty cool. We got some player cards here to let you know your actions, ways to gain fame and skill tests. We got the characters, boss. Yeah, that was the one I didn't recognize. Of course, might be one of the newer characters that I just don't know about or just forgot who knows i've slept since then ig88 of course boba fett Jin urso dr afra han solo and lando yeah this is the only one i didn't really recognize yeah all right let's open up the other bag and then we'll get to looking at each of these let's figure i get all six of the cards these look like planets. Yeah, so. And they got different planets on the back. Tatooine, Nauhutta. I'm not sure if those are going to come into play. Hopefully it's not like some of their other games where you have to have a stack for each of these. Because then that just takes up way space. I thought they were kind of going away from that. But. I did notice on the back it's got, well, they are flipped around, so I got a feeling these are, but you can see some nice artwork on these. Then it looks like a lot more of the symbols and more story, more skill checks. So probably just a meat of the game, like this is some goals or things that happen on those planets. So that's pretty cool. All right. I'll separate out the rest of these stacks. All right. So we'll look at this one first with this symbol. Looks like weapons, basically. Heaven blasters, vibro knives. Blaster rifle, vibro axe, grenade launcher. So, yep, quad laser cannon, ion cannon, maneuvering thrusters. So these look like personal maybe. And these are more for your ship, I'm thinking. So, and like I said, no fantasy flight. We'll probably see some expansions as long as this game is successful. Where we'll see more of these added to the stack, which would be pretty cool. All right, we'll move on to this one. See, it looks like credits in hand, so I'm assuming, yeah, these are jobs 
Oh, yeah. yeah. I just noticed. Yeah, gear. Hey, use the words. Yeah, modification for your ship. Okay. So these look like jobs, ways to make money, rooting out spies, the Kessel Run, hut favor. Sorry if I'm showing you too much. Um, I know for some people, they don't want to know and just mix up the cards and see what happens. Um, and so just stop watching because that's the last I'm really going to do is just show off these cards. And I am kind of flipping through. I'm not showing them all. So this looks like ships. Yep. I was thinking this was, looking at the back originally, I was thinking this was modifications for the ship, but it looks like that was on these cards. These look like they're the actual ways of getting the ships because we're seeing the same ships that we saw in the other stacks. So this is probably how you get those ships. All right. Looks like maybe a data crystal. Oh, cargo. Oh, this is cargo. Well, maybe it's stuff you're a crew, gear. So it looks like it's kind of some... Just random stuff, mods, looks like a little bit of everything. Because I would have thought this would have been the cargo thing. Oh, mod, cargo, mostly cargo. Did I just put it in the wrong stack? Nope, this is all cargo except for that one mod. Probably I'll let you hold more cargo is what it does. All right, and then we got whatever this symbol is. Oh, bounty, yeah, the handcuffs, that makes sense. And then, yeah, now we're seeing like the Greedo... So these are some of those were bounties that you can go turn in. I'm guessing there's Chewbacca. Yep. And some more jobs in here. Uh, this symbol doesn't show on there, but I think I saw as I was looking at the book, flipping through doing this earlier that it showed AI. So I'm assuming this is the solo play and this is the signify what the, um, the opposing AI bots going to do against you. So that looks like everything. We're going to get it all punched and take it apart and throw it to the table and get a couple plays through it. Um, thank you for joining me um, in this opening of Outer Rim. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day.